In this video, I'm going to look at Wix.com stock and do an intrinsic value analysis using a discounted cash flow model. Wix is one of the most popular website building platforms in the world, and its stock has seen better days. So let's see if there's a potential opportunity here. Before I get into that, this video should not be taken as a specific recommendation for your own portfolio. You should do your own research before you make any investment decision. I am not a licensed financial advisor, so if you're looking for one of those, Go get one. Anyways, let's get into it. Here is Wix.com stock, and boy, we're down 71.5%, at least as of the recording of this video. We'll see what it is by the time this video goes live, but certainly has seen better days, as I mentioned. If we go to the year-to-date view, we're actually down 45% year-to-date. So this is just from the beginning of January, so a huge drop in the share price, relatively speaking. That puts it at a market cap of just under $5 billion, or about $4.9 billion. And here's a brief overview, Wix.com, with its subsidiary develops and markets a cloud-based platform that enables anyone to create a website or web application in North America, Europe, Latin America, Asia, and internationally. Interesting that internationally is separate from all the different international locations, but okay. The company offers Wix Editor, a drag-and-drop visual development and website editing environment platform, Wix ADI that enables users to create a website for their specific needs, and Corvid by Wix to create websites and web applications. And then it provides some other tools, including Wix Payments, a payment platform Platform, which helps its users receive payments from their users through their Wix website. And as of December 2019, the company had approximately 165 million registered users and 4.5 million premium subscriptions, though these numbers have since changed and we'll review those in a bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the financials. One of the first things I like to look at is the balance sheet. Let's see what sort of cash pile they're working with, if any. They have about $450 million in cash, about $870 million in short-term investments, which when you combine those together, that gets them to about $1.5 three billion dollars in cash and short-term investments. We move on down to liabilities. We can take a look at their debt load. They have current long-term debt of nine hundred million dollars, just under a billion dollars. They have eighty-one million dollars in leases that they've capitalized, and about one hundred twenty, hundred twenty-five million of other non-current liabilities. Which, when you add up all those non-current liabilities, that would put them at something like one point one or one point one five billion dollars in those non-current liabilities, which is a couple hundred million less than their current cash and short term investment pile, so they have a net cash position from that perspective. Well, one other thing I always want to look at on the balance sheet is total shares outstanding to see if there's any dilution going on, and boy, it looks like there's been some pretty hefty dilution. I actually did some quick calculations, and it's more like a 27% increase in their total shares outstanding since 2016, where they had about 44 million shares. Now they're up to almost 57 million shares. And the reason this is important is because now there are more shares of the same pie that is the Wix company. When a company issues more shares, shares, that's called dilution. There are now more slices of the same business pie outstanding, even though the pie itself might not be any bigger. So now existing shareholders have a smaller slice of the business pie. The opposite of dilution would be share buybacks, where the company is actually buying back shares, and now there are less shares outstanding. However, that's not what we're seeing here. We're seeing the opposite, some pretty aggressive share issuance just over the past few years. Though they are in growth mode, so it makes some sense that you're going to see at least some dilution as the company tries to raise money or uses share-based compensation to compensate its executives rather than its existing cash pile, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on nevertheless. So that's pretty much it for the balance sheet. Let's take a look at the top line, go to their income statement and take a look at revenues. And we can see that they've had some pretty significant revenue growth during the past few years. We actually scroll down, we can see the exact growth rate. It looks like over the past few years, it's been closer to 30% revenue growth year over year, but it was as high as 46% back from 2016 into 2017. But the company continues to grow pretty quickly, at least when we look at top line revenues. Hey guys, real quick, if you want to get some free stocks, go check out the affiliate links in the description below to Weeble and Robinhood. If you open up accounts with those brokerages, they'll give you free stocks. I get some free stocks as well, so it's a win-win. Go ahead and do that now. It is free money. It's free real estate. But what about expenses? How does this translate to cash flow? After all, any company can blow out expenses to raise its top line revenues. You got to look at the bottom line as well, so let's take a look at the cash flow statement. And I always like to take a look at free cash flow, which is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. And this is really the lifeblood of a business in that you can use this money for pretty much anything, at least anything you would care for as a business. That's distributing dividends. That's reinvesting back into the business. It's basically the good stuff that's left over after you've paid out all your expenses. 
businesses and you're deciding whether to distribute it to shareholders or put it back into the business to drive more growth. And we can see in 2019 and 2020, they had around, oh, what, about $130 million or so in annual free cash flow. But that has actually decreased quite a bit in 2021 down to more like $30 million in free cash flow. And their capital expenditures have increased quite a bit as well, uh, going from about $18 million in 2020 to up to 30, almost $36 million in capital expenditures. That's definitely concerning to see this serious of a drop in cash flow in just one year. And I'm not really sure what exactly is going on here. We can take a look at some of the numbers. But for a company that's priced at nearly $5 billion in market cap terms, this is not something I would like to see. And one other item I do want to note on this cash flow statement is stock-based compensation right here. We can see this number climbing quite a bit. And that is also cause for concern, at least when a company isn't making that much money and it doesn't seem to be showing signs of slowing down the stock-based compensation. I don't know the exact terms of what's going on here, but in general, you're seeing some pretty significant numbers and increasing numbers at that. But now that we have kind of an overview of the financials of Wix.com, let's take a look at some of the growth projections and get a better feel for where they are in the broader market. I found this nice report written by Steve Benjamins here, and he kind of compiled a bunch of data to see the total amount of sites that are using the different website builders out there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this report. And this looks at the total market share for website builders. And Wix is the current leader on this chart, at least at about 4.5 million websites that are powered by Wix. And this is really the commercial providers in that it's not including WordPress.org, which I believe is by far the largest website provider. It's open source and it's free. So that would explain some of that. Uh, but Wix is a self-hosted sort of thing. But Wix, like its competitors like Squarespace or GoDaddy here, they provide pretty much all the services up front. Whereas with a WordPress.org site, you're probably going to have to self-host or do something where the actual company is not taking care of a lot of those services for you. But looking at just this segment of the market, you're looking at something like a 50 to 60 percent market share for Wix.com. But there's a little bit more to this because this doesn't include Shopify, which is a big web service provider. So we'll get to that in a second. But uh, scrolling on down, we can see that the market share for the top 1 million websites, so the biggest websites essentially, actually that would go to Squarespace and Wix falls to third at a much lower share of those top 1 million websites. So based on this data, you could argue that a lot of the Wix sites are not as high quality, at least on average, compared to something like a Squarespace, though this is sort of incomplete data. It's just really a very high level snapshot. But if we move on down the report a little bit more, we can take a look at the market share for e-commerce builders. And this would theoretically be a higher profit sort of share of the general web building market. And we can see that Shopify is actually the leader here. And this doesn't include Wix and some of those other providers, which I guess are categorized differently. They're not really pure e-commerce providers, even though they do have e-commerce services like payment processing and that sort of thing. But in general, Shopify, which would be a big competitor to Wix and the other providers, has 1.4 million sites and really is dominating this specific e-commerce niche if we're going to categorize it that way. And speaking of Shopify, I actually wanted to take a quick look at their numbers just to get kind of a quick comparison. And you can see that Shopify has a much pricier market cap. They're at $82 billion compared to Wix.com's almost $5 billion. And if we take a quick look at their financials and go to their cash flow statement, and then we do cash from operations minus capital expenditures, we're looking at something like $450 billion in annual free cash flow. So is it enough to justify that 80 something billion dollar price tag? That's up for you to decide. But at least compared to Wix, they have much higher free cash flow and their free cash flows are not shrinking, at least as of last year. But back to Wix, they very recently had their earnings call, which was less than ideal as we saw a pretty significant drop off after earnings were released, continuing the general drop off that we've seen over the last year. And if we actually look at some of the more granular data, we can see that their total revenue in the fourth quarter was still up year over year. And I actually wanted to see a little bit more about what the breakdown was. And apparently the subscriptions for the website were still up about 15% year over year, at least for revenue. And then their business solutions, which I imagine would include their payment processing and that sort of stuff that would really be more in that sort of Shopify camp of e-commerce type solutions. That was up as well in the fourth quarter, up to $81 million of their revenue. And that was up 19% year over year. And then transaction revenue was up 35% up to $36 million. So that definitely would seem to be the payment processing segment. And if we go on down to the full year results, let me just zoom in a bit so it's a little bit easier to read. The total revenue for the full year of 2021 was about that $1.2 billion number that we saw, and that was up 30% year over year. And we look at the breakdown here, the revenue for creative subscriptions was up 21%, revenue for business solutions was up 59%, and then their transaction revenue was up a whopping 134%. So it seems like if there's going to be significant revenue growth in the future, it might be really pulled forward by the business side of things, which would make sense. Typically, the more commercial focused things are probably going to have higher profit margins. But then again, there might be greater competition there. We 
we see what Shopify is doing, of course. So now we get to the question of valuation, and this is a simple discounted cash flow model that goes to 10 years. And you can see for this example, I'm using 25% for the first five years in growth and free cash flows, and then 7% on average for the next five years, given that it's a 10 year analysis. My discount rate is 15% since I would want to have market beating returns. And historically, the market's been somewhere between eight and 10% per year on average. Granted, that is past looking. We'll see what the future actually holds. And then the year zero cash flow I'm using is $30 million since that was last year's cash flows. And this is 0.03 because this is in billions. And then this excess capital number takes the cash and short term investments minus the non current liabilities or long term debt. And that gets us to $180 million here. So then we take our year zero cash flow, grow it by our applicable growth rates in each year. We'll multiply our year 10 cash flow by our terminal multiple, which gets us our terminal value, which will then discount appropriately. And we add up all of these cash flows in column G to get us a present value of future cash flows of $850 million. Then we'll add on the excess capital of $180 million to get us an intrinsic value of $1.03 billion, which given that the market cap is something like $4.9 billion would imply a margin of danger of around 80%. But that's assuming this whole model is true. And of course, we're trying to tell the future here, which is inevitably impossible to do. You're going to see some variabilities. So the goal is to remain conservative in your assumptions. And let's see what these assumptions really mean. Even with this 25% growth rate, which you might think is too conservative, you might think it's too aggressive, whatever. In year 10, we're getting to around $130 million in free cash flow. And keep in mind, they were actually able to hit this last year and the year before that. They're around $120, $130 million in free cash flow. So what if we say that in this year, they're actually going to recover their free cash flows and we can just bump this year zero cash flow back up to $120 million and we'll use that as our base instead. Then what does the model look like? Well, assuming a 25% growth rate, that gets them to $500 million in free cash flow, which is around where Shopify is right now. So maybe they could get to that. I would imply that they're not as grossly overvalued, again, assuming these assumptions and a 15% discount rate, which you might lower or maybe you'll raise it depending on what you're trying to do. But this is a really hard one for me to guess on what an appropriate growth rate is. What really is the terminal value of Wix? What can they really get to, at least in a free cash flow basis? I'm not really sure, especially since we've seen a significant drop in cash flow over the last year. Is that temporary? Is that something they can recover from? I'm not an expert in this space. I would definitely need to do more research to really see what exactly is going on. But even then, at a $5 billion valuation, they do need quite a bit to go right. And the more you pay for a company, the more you need to go right. And the less you pay for a company, the less you need to go go right for your assumptions to come true. So as of now, my plan for Wix is to sit tight and not do anything about it, at least until the price comes down quite a bit more or some other fundamental news that might change my assumptions or change what I see the risk to be in investing in Wix. Whatever the case, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and you might make completely different assumptions. So I'm not suggesting that you don't buy or buy into Wix. Again, it is totally up for you to decide. But for me, I'll pass, at least for now. With that said, if you like this video or found it informative, then definitely like it since I would help the channel out a lot. And if you want to see more content about investing and personal finance, then definitely subscribe since I put out new videos every single week and wouldn't want you guys to miss out. Check out the free stuff in the affiliate links in the description below. But until next time, take care.